the so severely repressed sexual abuse at an early age that is so unconscious, I can't remember it to, you know, let it go. I've been trying to just send forgiveness to the perpetrator and see if that works. Um, is that all I need to do, or do I need to kind of re-experience, you know? A lot of therapies say you need to re-experience everything before you can actually heal it and release it and forgive it. Is, is that true or not true? I'm, I, I'm only aware that it happened in a general sense, but not, I haven't, you know, re-experienced. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think, I think, uh, actually Gary really, really addressed that when he talked about you, you can't analyze the darkness. And if you really take a pause and you just take a deep breath with that, it's like, whoa, if you really look at the implications of that answer, they are far-reaching. Uh, for example, um, in terms of all these, these pathways that kind of say, you know, you got to go into your mind and it's almost like going on a witch hunt or something, you know, to find the culprit in there, like, get the torch and we're going down and find the witch, you know, the Salem witch trials Gary's talked about in there. You know, it's, it's not really productive. And so what came to me one time when I was kind of asking Jesus about this, he said, David, you want this to be simple? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, I gave you A Course in Miracles as an answer to this unspoken prayer that you were asking for healing. And I said, yeah, thank you, I, I really appreciate that. And he says at one point in the Course, he said, this Course is, is very simple. It's very simple and direct. I mean, I, I mean I, at the beginning I might have contested that a little, but not much. I was like, whoa, this is really direct. He's saying the same thing a hundred different ways, but he's like coming right at the core. And then he said, this course has everything that you need. That's a pretty interesting instruction. And then he said, this course has a workbook, and I'm going to give you just two instructions. You know, not to do more than one lesson a day, and as best you can, don't make exceptions to the lessons. That's pretty simple. Two instructions, and one lesson a day. And so, the workbook is the laboratory, it's the mechanism of, of Jesus has given us for doing this. So when we ask the questions about, we'll say, healing uh, a wound from the past, like a, an abuse memory or something like this, that we're not even fully aware of, maybe it's not even fully in awareness. Again, we're not, we're not to go into the darkness and say, I think I already know what my problem is. Uh, my problem is, I've got this it's more than a sneaky suspicion. Now I, I'm pretty sure I, I was abused as a child, and I want to heal that, like if that's, as if that's the problem. And what Jesus comes along in his workbook, and he's saying, no, no, you, you still haven't been able to define the problem. You have a perceptual problem. You do not have a sexual abuse problem. You do not have a relationship problem. You may believe you have a relationship problem, or an illness problem, sexual abuse, but basically, you have a perceptual problem. But what's that? Well, first of all, he says, basically you're seeing a world that's not even there. That's a hallucination. That's a pretty good start. He even uses the word hallucination in the workbook. But he says, really, that's no big deal. That's not the problem. The problem isn't the world, but the problem is your misperception of the world. You can see the world a new way with the Holy Spirit. So, Basically, this is where we talked a little bit this morning about lessons 79 and 80. You know, let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. Think how applicable lesson 79 is to your question, which is really what Gary was giving you the answer. Instead of analyzing and trying to figure out what the problem was, or where it was in the past, or how many years ago, or how many past lives ago it, it occurred, and all this and that, and going through past life regressions and all that stuff, Jesus is saying in Lesson 79 that if you will recognize that you have a perceptual problem, then you are ready to open up to the correction, which is Lesson 80, you know, let me recognize my problems have been solved. So I know, I can relate to this in the sense that I was in university for 10 years and oh man, did I try to analyze the darkness uh, in a lot of different disciplines in a lot of ways, and I was even an activist and tried to not only analyze the darkness, but fight the darkness. 
Uh, and I found out that, that none of it would work because I really wanted the simple course in forgiveness. And that's what the Course in Miracles is. I have a question for whoever wants to answer it. It's just, while we're sitting here, not enough. Um, the thing with the, the like they're symbols, all these stories that we create, they're all symbols to, you know, take us to another place. And this thing keeps coming up, and then when you were talking, I was trying to get the answer that I might not even have to ask the question. And you're like, just ask the question, because you said, like, if the Holy Spirit tells you to go to Michigan, just listen and go to Michigan. But this thing about this breach birth thing keeps coming up. Like you guys said it, and then she brought it up again, and someone told me something before I came here, and then my mom told me I was a breach birth. And it keeps playing out of my script, this breach birth thing. I'm like thinking, is there something that I'm not seeing in this symbolism that keeps popping up in front of me? Like say it has no emotional charge, there's no thing with it, but it keeps putting itself there, and then I kind of lighten up, or I light up when I hear it. Like, what does that mean? Like, what do you do with it? Just, like, something told me to ask you the question, so that's the only reason I'm asking. You don't have to even give me the the thing, but just with any of us, with any of our symbols, like, whether it be, you know, emotionally charged or just something that keeps presenting itself, what do you do with that? Well, I could just say very simply, too, that when she brought up the priest's birthday, I was saying, that was just part of a parable, just like the crucifixion was part of a parable, and it doesn't mean anything uh, by itself you know, taken out of context with the parable. So, so it's preached birth. Like, a lot of things are like these, these beautiful symbols and synchronicities that you get. I remember I went through a phase with the Course where I would go through the whole day just flowing, 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 having all these great encounters and everything, and occasionally my head would just turn to like a, a digital clock, and it would be like 11-11. Or I'd be going through the day and it'd turn and it's 1-1-1. Uh, and I'm like, okay, and I'm going through the rest of the day, and I, I, my head turns and I look down, and you know, I kept getting these ones, digital ones. I had a digital watch instead of this. And you know, the question is kind of like, what does that mean? What does 11, 11 mean, or something like this? What does breach birth mean? There's really no specific meaning. Sometimes, if you hear it over and over and over, it's definitely getting your attention, but. It's kind of like that thing about analyzing the darkness we were just talking about, or analyzing dreams, dream symbology. Um, it's basically, you, you answered the question, you said, I feel great, I feel good. Yeah, Gary was just saying, when you feel great and good, that's, you're flowing in the miracle, you know. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know. <laughs> and also this relates to what Adele was saying, that instead of looking for the the child abuse or the memories in the past, if you just are doing the workbook lessons and you're trusting every day that the Holy Spirit will bring you everything that you need for the healing, just as you do your simple workbook lesson and flow through the day, isn't that a lot simpler than trying to do the old psychoanalytic approach, where like Gary said, asking all these questions, fancy questions and whatever, isn't it more simple to just carry that lesson like a torch through the day and know that Everything that comes to you will be the perfect thing to help you in the awakening. So, I like, I'm, I'm all for simple. Let's keep it really simple. That's the way to go. There's something, a question going over there, too. We mentioned the other day, by the way, that uh, the Course uses the word simple 158 times. And so, it really is supposed to be simple. It's just a choice between one of two things. You know, we think that there are a trillion different objects out there, six and a half billion people, uh, millions of things to choose between. And here's the Course saying, well, no, not really. There are really just two things. There's reality and there's unreality. You know, and your job is to choose reality. 